Hi, I got a real interesting one for you today. Check this out. Well, okay. It's a humble microcurrent. EV Blog Forum member uh, Insat Man uh, reported that he recently uh, purchased a microcurrent and was having a problem with the offset voltage of this and was getting in the order of like millivolts, um, you know, four or five millivolts, something like that, offset voltage uh, with no current on the input. And of course, um, the spec is much, much better than that. In fact, the uh, Maxim chip inside this thing, I've done videos before, is rated for a nominal uh, 0.0 point or a typical 0.1 microvolts or 100 nanovolts offset voltage typical. And if you multiply that by the times 100 gain in this thing typically, even though it's a two stage, um, let's call it um, 0.01 millivolts. And even if you account for like absolute worst case data sheet uh, values, you know, the uh, right extreme ends of the uh, bell curve for the offset of this uh, chip, taking into account manufacturing process uh, variations and temperature over the extreme range, it's still rated for um, a 2.5 microvolt offset voltage or uh, what's that, 0.25 millivolts um, offset. But they were ordering at least, they were getting at least an order of magnitude more than that. So something was up. And then when a second user uh, named Keox actually reported and uh, posted the findings of a similar thing, I thought, uh huh, let's actually investigate. So I got myself a, uh, uh, like a new production batch, a 5,000 odd serial number microcurrent. Let's plug it in and see what happens. So what we'll do is we'll actually uh, short the input. It's got a shorting switch to actually uh, do that. And I'll just like put it to the middle of the range. Doesn't really matter, but just for reference, we'll do all our tests in the uh, uh, 10 ohm shunt resistance range or one millivolt per microamp. So there you go, it's powered on. Plug it in and look, no worries whatsoever. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. Hmm. So, you know, you can confirm that on any meter you happen to use. There you go, 0.02, it's it, no problems whatsoever. So like, um, and you know, I tested a few of these and I got basically um, the same result. So like, what's going on? I don't, like, you know, uh, did a couple of people get bad ones? Oh, oh, oh. Oops, what's going on here? So why does the 121GW measure different to everything else? I mean, 3 millivolt, actually minus uh, 3.7 millivolts. This is, uh, you know, the order of what um, they were measuring. So what's going on here? Take the exact same leads, plug them in here again to verify this is a bloody good seven and a half digit key site meter, nothing. Uh, I, I don't understand. Let's try the Keithley. What? 10 millivolts? What the heck's going on? I mean, if you have a look at the microcurrent schematic, it's the output is a uh, fairly low impedance through a protection resistor driven by the Maxim chip and there's a split rail uh, system in there. Um, if that moves, it shouldn't cause a problem because look at the uh, star reference point in there. Um, the output ground is taken from there and uh, like it should work. So really the only way that we could uh, be getting an offset error here with a short on the input is if there was something wrong offset voltage on those Maxim chips. But this is like more than an order of magnitude out of the absolute worst case production spec over the entire temperature range. It, I've just never seen anything like this. So I tried various meters in the lab here and sure enough, only the Keithley uh, DMM7510, the most expensive meter I've got here, highest spec meter I've got here in the lab, and the 121GW actually measure a high offset voltage and they actually measure different, minus four and was it minus that we'll get in there? 10? Yep, minus 10 millivolts. <laughs> this is strange. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. Look at this, minus four millivolts? Nothing. And it should, this has a resolution of a, a hundred uh, 
microvolts. So we should be able to get, it should be like reading like 40 counts there. What? <laughs> what? Mind blown. And sure enough, look at this. If I put uh, the key sight and the 121GW in parallel, okay, minus six millivolts, they match. No worries whatsoever. Switch that to volts. Poof. Gone. It's magic. So let's see what happens if we plug another set of leads in parallel here and actually plug these into the meter to confirm it. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere. Bang on! And it's changed yet again. 15.1 millivolts. Let's go over here. It's dropped back down to 9. Aha! Now we're able to confirm it with other meters. But if we actually disconnect the Keithley meter, it causes a problem. And no, it's not the uh, input impedance down here. It's a standard 10 meg, but I switch it to auto and it causes exactly the same issue. <laughs> but only when we put two meters in parallel does it actually cause a problem. And sure enough, if we actually put pretty much any two meters in parallel, we're able to get something. Um, once again, it's a different value every time. So you might think, aha, when you put multiple 10 meg uh, input resistances in parallel, that might do it. Well, let's check that out. There you go. That meter in parallel with 10 meg does absolutely nothing. Hmm. How about one meg? Nope. A <laughs> hundred K. Nope. It's not the load. So you might think, okay, maybe there's something wrong with that uh, split rail generator in there, because we've just got the single coin cell battery, and then it uses uh, that uh, LMV321 op amp to just split that in the middle. Well, if we put uh, our meter on the reference output, reference ground output, which is actually the output of the virtual ground, and measure our battery, then 1.33 plus and minus 1.33. Perfect. So this is just madness. So what we want to do is compare that because this is the new uh, batch number, the 5000 one. Let's compare this with an older uh, batch unit. I happen to have one 3690 here. So it's from a couple of thousand. Uh, where am I plugging this into? There. A couple of thousand ago. And let's try that. Nope. It's absolutely fine. That's the offset voltage you'd expect. And uh, this worst case thing we had, plug it into both. No, nah, it's hunky dory. In fact, I've done this with many old ones over a whole bunch of serial numbers. Not a problem. And I've confirmed this with a second one as well. A second uh, recent serial number. So something very strange is going on here with the with this new batch one compared to any previous old batch version which I've uh, measured and I've never had a single reported issue with offset voltage apart from user error or uh, you know some other such thing it just hasn't been a problem some have been a little bit higher but the, this is like an order of magnitude or more higher than what you'd expect absolute worst case I mean, there's not much that can go wrong on this thing. There's just the two Maxim uh, Precision chopper amps on there. Um, never had an issue with those. I'm always buying uh, genuine parts for those. We've got just the offset uh, op amp for the split uh, rail thing. Never had an issue with that. And there's a couple of shunt resistors and a couple of switches and Bob's your uncle. I mean, what could possibly go wrong with this thing? Well, you saw that it was different depending on what sort of meter we hooked it up to. So even though we couldn't confirm it by a resistive load, hmm, maybe something else is going on. So let's hook up the output to a scope, see what's what. All right, so let's hook up a good uh, low noise scope. We've got the Roden Schwartz one here with his big 10-bit uh, converter. I'm using a proper uh, scope probe to BNC lead using the uh, proper probing technique. So let's switch it on, see what we get. Uh, 10 millivolts per division, um, and that's kind of like the noise you expect, like the high bandwidth uh, noise, of course. So, 
I, there's really nothing doing there, and uh, we're in high resolution mode, you know, we can go to sample mode, that's the, there's more of the noise which you kind of expect from a high resolution converter, I've done a whole video on uh, digital scope noise, in quote marks, um, but that's fine and dandy, it's no problem. So if we hook that up to the Decade Resistance box in parallel, let's go to a Meg there, everything's hunky-dory, um, we can, well, where, there we go, we can go down to 10k, everything's fine, let's go down to 1k, Oh, doesn't like that, does it? And you can see that offset drop a bit, and you can see it over here, hmm, we're getting somewhere, but this is a very low load, I mean 1k, we were seeing this, with 10 mega ohm input impedance meters. So let's go back to our trusty 121GW here and switch between it. Whoa, this is heavy. Look at that, 4.6 millivolts offset and sure enough, you can see we're at 10 millivolts per division and you can see that it is basically dropping by that five millivolts there on average. I mean, you can whack uh, average on if you want, it's not going to be a huge amount better, we might have to put some more averages on, but you can, whoa, that's bad. <laughs> We've got something oscillating in this puppy, have we? Doesn't look great, does it? Whoa, look at that. Wow. Wow, we've got a whole bunch of, well, high frequency stuff. Look at that. High frequency oscillation in there. Wow. And that frequency is about 2.57 megahertz. Well, there you go. <laughs> hey, this little baby's oscillating. But what's oscillating? It's got to be the op amp. I've never had, never seen that maximum op amp oscillate before. It's crazy. And if we whack in the old board, let's give that a burl. There we go. No worries whatsoever. And on millivolt mode, look at that, stable as Uluru. And as you may have started to guess by now, it perhaps has something to do with a capacitive load, not just resistive load, or probably doesn't have anything to do with resistive load at all, really. Um, so I've got a little uh, decade capacitance box here, and I've got nothing connected in parallel at the moment. Switch it up. I'm at, uh, what is it, 5 path, 10 path, so I'm just putting some... Hey, hello. Try and keep my fingers off it. There we go. Look at that. That's a hundred puff. Wow. There you go. And let's put, sure enough, hundred puff. Yep. That thing oscillates. Let's get the old one. Whack it in. See if it does the same thing. Nope. Look at that. Where are we up to? Let's put in, let's go for break. Put in a microfarad. No. No, no problems whatsoever. That, so that can do like, that's a hundred mic, hundred microfarads on the output. The existing ones don't oscillate at all. And that's what I've always found. But there's something afoot here. Hmm, I smell some faint rarefied subtle problems here. All right, so let's look at both boards under the microscope here. Here's our problem one and an older batch one. And apart from the color of the PC, uh, the solder mask, uh, yes, it was uh, changed at one point. Um, there's like no obvious like manufacturing, um, you know, issues like solder uh, joint issues or anything like that. Everything looks, everything looks hunky dory. Let's go in and have a look at our Maxim chip, shall we? Sorry, sometimes it's hard to see those. Uh, laser markings on there, ABAA, and sure enough, that is correct as per the uh, data sheet. It's that's the manufacturing code on top for the Max R forty two thirty nine, and I always buy these uh, Maxim chips from the genuine source because they are like it's the main thing that gives this uh, 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 along with the resistors, which I've come a gutser on before, video linked in at the end of this, that's worth a look too, where I had a uh, a similar sort of uh, production uh, specification problem due to the resistors, um, and, uh, but that basically determines the full performance of this thing, so, like, what's going on? I've, I've, 
like I buy from like DigiKey. And sure enough, if you have a look at the uh, older board over here, it's exactly the same AB. AA. I, I bet my bottom dollar they are genuine Maxims. So maybe let's go over here and check out the only other active uh, component we have in here, which is our split rail um, op amp. And this is an LMV321. And uh, the old one has the code RC1F on it. Let's have a look at this one here. Aha, 321S. But uh, hey, you know, I mean, it's it's an LM like it's a three two one. So, but it but it does look different. It has those bars top and bottom, but technically, that is different. Hmm. Now, normally the uh, offset voltage of this LMV three two one op amp doesn't matter, and well, it doesn't. You can go. I could go and demonstrate this, but you know, really, it's a trivial concept because the output reference point of our amplifiers and the gain of the amplifiers is all determined by that split rail. So that rail can be anywhere within that 3 volt range. It doesn't have to be exactly plus minus 1.5 volts. It can be plus half a volt and, and negative uh, 2.5 volts, for example. It doesn't matter. It's only That only becomes a problem when you've got uh, you know the headroom of the amplifier to swing the output voltage. But its actual value does not matter. So technically, even if this thing oscillated and that value changed by five millivolts or something it's not really an issue but aha uh -huh, it also couples through via the battery and the bypass capacitors through to the power rails of the max of the maxim uh, op amp so maybe the power supply rejection ratio at that high frequency of the um, Maxim op amps is what's causing it to couple in and give that offset voltage on the output somehow, something like that. So in theory, it's possible for this LMV321 to actually do that. But geez, it's, it, it was such a remote possibility. And it's especially more surprising considering that I've already uh, taken care of this in the design aspect of the microcurrent. I've put in a 270 ohm output resistor. A lot of people over the years have asked what that is for. And that is just for uh, stability of this op amp. Even though the LM v321 is actually rated to drive a 200 picofarad load in a unity gain uh, configuration without any series resistance adding the series resistance on the output uh, just increases the capacitive load that you can drive and keeps it stable so we're seeing here oscillations of you know like 50 to 100 puff or something was starting to go at i think uh 50 picofarad so uh, you know really something is seriously wrong here this it's almost as if this is not an lmv321 is it just an lm 321 and they are two very different parts each uh, the difference between lm and lmv is v stands for voltage it goes down to a lower voltage rail in the case of the lmv it's rated down it's fully specified down at 2.7 volts which just happens to be the dropout voltage of the battery in this particular application which is why this little op amp is almost perfect for this sort of application now, as it turns out, I did have a couple of old uh, bags of some old leftover parts from uh, previous uh, runs or whatever. This one's from uh, 2013, and I've always used the LMV. There it is, uh, 321 IDBVR, the Texas Instruments part, and I've always bought them from DigiKey or Mouser in that particular uh, part, and I've checked the number on that, and it's got RC1F, sure enough, and, and this one dates from uh, September 2010, and it's exactly the same thing, and it's an RC1F, but I did find an RC1K, so K might be, you know, some other, um, like, date variant or uh, you know something like that but once again they all have that RC1 on them not that uh, 321T or S and sure enough I did check out my uh, mouser um, orders and I did actually order it looks like I um, they must have been like out of stock or something like that perhaps of the IDB VR or whatever it is um so I actually ordered an LMV321 AS5X from um, on semiconductor slash uh, Fairchild, and if we go in and actually have a look at the data sheet of this thing, it's actually the only data sheet I can find that does not tell me 
what the designator is on the actual chip, the SMD code. It just doesn't tell me. Maybe I'm blind, but I cannot find it in here. It's just got some uh, crap to do with uh, the evaluation board and things like that, but it does not have... Like, there's the evaluation board. Great. Th fantastic. Thanks for the info on the eval board, but then it just goes down into the physical dimensions of the package and gives you no identifier whatsoever. So I don't know if this is... Oh, I assume it is. Like, assuming that mouse I haven't goofed up and they haven't given haven't substituted the part although it, as I said at the end of this video you'll see another video where this has happened before where I think it was DigiKey was it actually screwed up the parts or the manufacturer screwed up the parts sent into them and I don't know whether or not it's an LM321 or not but uh, yeah anyway the codes not there so I I still I've looked through a lot of LMV321 data sheets cannot find that code at all. I've looked through the various SMD substitution uh, code lists on the internet. Can't find anything with 321T or S. But in any case, the OnSemi one or slash Fairchild one, um, it basically has exactly the same specs. It's still rated for the 200 uh, picofarad load and stuff like that. It's exactly the same. So why one works robustly with like a 10, oh, what, 100 microfarads load on the output and the other one doesn't? Uh, like, not even, it doesn't even meet that 200 puff? I, that's the crazy thing I don't understand. And if you have a look at the schematic here, granted, it is a bit unusual in the way that, um, you know, we don't have a direct capacitance load on V ground here, for example, because the bypass caps on the Max 439 are actually across V plus and V minus. So they're directly across the battery, not actually on the output. So it's kind of hard to say what the effective capacitance is on that virtual ground relative to, say, the negative rail, uh, for example. So it's hard to tell. But like I've proven that the Texas instrument part with exactly the same specs it just never oscillates. With any capacitive load, it's completely robust. But this one isn't. So it, it's almost, I'm starting to suspect that it's actually an incorrect or possibly even a fake part. But fake parts from the likes of Mouser are virtually unheard of. That's why you buy from DigiKey and Mouser and Farnells and the other reputable uh, catalog suppliers so that you don't get the fakes. And I have got the assembler searching to see if maybe they can find the original reel for this one, but unfortunately it wasn't a manufacturer reel, it was a mouser reel. So they re-reeled it and put their own mouser sticker on it. Um, so really it wouldn't, it's probably devoid of the original manufacturer's uh, label, unfortunately. So, bugger, come a guts are there. And if we have a look at the uh, on semiconductor LM321, then, well, if you look at the marker, they do have the marking uh, description here. Specific device code. I, I don't know. Would that be 321? And But then it would have the assembly location, the year, and the work week. So, uh, really, <laughs> it ain't that. And it, and it's um, this one has like the bars over the top, not these little dots here. So it's definitely not an uh, on semi LM321. So there's only one thing left to do to uh, test my theory that it actually is that LMV321 uh, is to uh, suck it out and put on a good one. I found another reel. This is an old DigiKey reel once again, RC1K. So I'll whack that in, see how it goes. And there we have our new chip on there. Let's plug her in and try it out. Look at that. 0.01 millivolts. No worries whatsoever. That worked a treat. And we'll just add in some capacitance there and have a look at the scope. Yep. No worries. Beautiful. Okay, so what I've gone and done is actually uh, got a couple of ones that I could get in stock, LMV321s, uh, various types, the LMV321AS 
uh, 5X, which uh, is the on semi uh, part, which I think might be the one in here, but we'll have a look at that. Um, we've got the LMV321 M5, which is a TI part, which is the same as the IDBV part, which I know definitely works and has been used in almost all my production units. Um, but the, there's an M5 variant, so whatever, we'll use that. And um, there's an LMV321 I L D I T L is it? No, I L T or something like that. Um, and that's an S T micro part, but they're all L M V three two one. So let's give them all a bill. And sure enough, if we take a look at the AS five X uh, variant, it's got that three two one on it, but it's got three two one B. So we've seen, seen what three two one S and three two one T. So it looks like the culprit might be this um, on semi part which is the LMV321 AS5X so but what I'll do is I'll, I'll solder this one in and give it a go see if it has the exact same problem as the S ones that are in the current board um, but once again the data sheet doesn't tell you what that S or B or T or whatever it is means and wow there you go that's a hundred millivolts per division this is awful, like uh, we're talking 190 millivolts offset now. This is insane. That's like a half an order of magnitude worse than the uh, than the other 321T or whatever it is, which I presume is like a an on semi one as well. So what is it with these on semi parts? Wow, horrible. So that's definitely a problem. Let's actually uh, disconnect the the meter. Oh, that's the 121GW. Let's switch it. No, I switched it to volts. And did the uh, did the volt millivolt thing, and uh, it still makes no difference. Disconnect it. No, no. Look, that's just the scope. That is just the scope now. Wow. Um, that is so. This B variant, whatever that is, is grossly different in this particular circuit configuration with this particular load with the times 10 pro but like let me actually disconnect the those leads from there wow look at that that's ridiculous and here's the 321 ilt part uh this is from st there we go it's k177 let's give that a try well go st there we go uh 0.04 um, and no worries whatsoever. Uh, clean as a whistle there. We no, modify it. Let's put our capacitive um, oh, load. <laughs> Don't put it on the input. Okay. Let's wind her up. No, that's still okay. Couple of hundred puff. Yeah, no worries. Let's whack on a hundred mic. Whoa. Yeah, okay. It's not terrific on a hundred mic, is it? There we go. I mean, we've got some oscillation there, but with a hundred, uh, sorry, with uh, two microfarads on there, hundred mic, oi, hundred mic. It's a little bit of switching noise. Don't worry about that. And, um, but otherwise it's, I mean, it's stable, no worries. If we actually feed one milliamp into it, of course, you know, no worries whatsoever. We get our, well, that's off scale, but anyway, there it is. There's our yellow line right on a volt. No worries. Um, and that's with a, um, like 33 microfarad load on the output. So that ST1 is operating a treat. Okay, let's try the TI part. Let's try this M5. What is that? That's got A13 on it. All right. Here she goes. Now that one's not too bad, but it is showing a slightly higher offset. We're talking, uh, you know, point, almost 0 0.2 millivolts there. It's still, you know, order of magnitude lower than the problem we're getting. And uh, it, it's still okay. So I wouldn't uh, quibble about that at all. As long as it doesn't uh, oscillate with any sort of uh, capacitive load, then uh, that's okay. So we'll whack a load on. 33 microfarad on there. So that's all right. Hundreds of puff. Yeah, not a problem. Oh, it gets a bit noisier up there, but still like not in the order of millivolts. It's in the order of like uh, hundreds of millivolts. So yeah, I would say um, that, T that particular TI part 
is a pass as well. By the way, I'm doing this on a different board, it's just so I did have different boards to play with, and I haven't tested this one for its original offset. I probably should have. So that offset could be uh, coming from the Maxim uh, chips. So, but the main thing we're looking for here is that you know it doesn't oscillate like the uh, on semi slash uh, Fairchild part does. So there you have it. That's a real interesting. Uh, Murphy, that's probably like a level 5 Murphy got you because not only do we have a, uh, a difference in between manufacturers uh, parts when there should be no difference according to the data sheet they should both be, well all of them what did we test out, uh, like 4 different chips there and only 1 out of those 4 the AS5X from uh, Fairchild slash on semiconductor is the culprit and would you believe it that one is the one i actually originally specified in my bomb and that bomb comes from like eight years ago like way way actually longer than nine years ago when i developed the first microcurrent i think um way before the microcurrent goal but i don't think i've ever really used that apart from obviously um this new uh production run it looks like i still haven't confirmed uh, but I think the AS5X variant may have been used in there. So, like, just luck of the draw. And a really, you know, I, I've always um, considered that part to be completely um, safe, you know, because I designed in the as, uh, the aspects so it would take into account the capacitive uh, load and it shouldn't have been a problem and it's not on three out of the four chips we tested. Two are TI brand, one ST and one on semi and it, it doesn't even uh, well i you know we could do further videos actually just testing that chip on its own that might be interesting just putting a capacitive load on there nothing else just hooking it up on a bare board with nothing else in there except for that uh chip that might be uh, fascinating i won't do that uh, today but if i do i'll uh, whack it over just on maybe uh, ev blog 2 channel or something like that by the way ev blog 2 channel linked in at the end of this video somewhere here check it out um i think i'm up to like 50 Four fifty-five thousand subs or something. So I was uh, joking before to David that it wouldn't be funny if we actually got a YouTube silver button, got to a hundred thousand subs for just my uh, second channel where I just throw random videos and stuff. Um, just you know, single take uh, things and other stuff that doesn't really isn't uh, polished and produced for the main channel. So anyway, so yeah, subscribe to EV Blog too. There's tons of content over there. <laughs> Let's see if we can get that silver play button just for shits and giggles. Anyway, um, I hope you found that interesting. That is absolutely fascinating that we found this problem. It's not something you'd expect. In a precision instrument like this, I've had problems with the resistors before. That was like a supply manufacturing supply distributor uh, goof up, and I'll link that video in somewhere here at the end, um, as I said. And uh, you'd expect the Maxim chip to be at fault, and no, it was oscillation in the virtual rail chip and against all odds um like i did, <laughs> i don't know so yeah it would be interesting to do a follow up video on that but there you go that's how little you can get little gotchas like that that cause an issue wow it's like unbelievable anyway just for uh kicks let's hook up uh that's are we on the right range there let's just hook up our current Gen, oh, sorry, oh, I keep mixing these knobs up. I keep switching between oscilloscopes and it's like, it's crazy. There we go, one volt. So let's actually do some single shot trigger. Auto normal, single shot. I'm going to switch that on. And, hey, there we go. Is it going to ramp up cleanly? What I'm doing is uh, just switching on. I'm just operating the uh, output uh, of my programmable function gen here. Oh, turned off. Uh, yeah, no, no. All right. Go. Hey, look at that. Beautiful ramp. Ah, oh, thing of beauty is a joy forever. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed that uh, video. That's absolutely fascinating. You don't see that one every day. I think that one's a level five Murphy this and I'm still not sure of the exact um, serial number ranges and stuff like that because I didn't keep track to that level you know maybe if you're Apple or somebody you might track 
you know, you might have a comprehensive um, system that, you know, a comprehensive production documentation system that actually documents what serial number parts came from, what supplier went into what serial number boards or what day and all that, you know, sort of jazz if you're a huge enterprise and, you know, that could be worth millions or hundreds of millions of dollars to you um, if you have any potential issues. Um, but of course, I'm very careful where I get the uh, Maxim chip from, of course, and really there are, you know, there's no substitutes for that uh, chip. But of course, there's the possibility of fakes for that. So I always buy those through Mouser and DigiKey. But I'm pretty sure I've always bought the LMV321 also through Mouser or DigiKey or another reputable supplier. So I'm not sure of the exact date codes and things like that. I still maybe have to go through some old records. I might be able to pull up something. So this is actually a problem that uh, is not going to affect all microcurrents with that particular uh, chip on it in all scenarios. I mean, uh, you don't even, if you hook it up to uh, the oscilloscope with the probe capacitance and everything, you're not going to see that. Or if you hook it up to the right type of multimeter that so happens that, you know, that doesn't have the uh, reactive load on it that uh, is required to make this thing oscillate, then you're never going to see it. So even hooked up to like a high-end multimeter and a high-end scope, you don't see, necessarily see the problem unless you put a, a reactive enough load on there that causes instability and causes the thing to oscillate. So it's, it's one of those like marginal cases that in this case, I've actually got a production uh, test jig. I don't have one here, it's at the assembler that actually measures the offset voltage as part of the production go no go test. I can't remember the exact limit. It's like, you know, half a millivolt or something like that. Um, and I'd have to read my documentation on that, but like it obviously presents a small load enough that it didn't, none of these units actually uh, failed that test as far as I'm aware anyway. So I test for offset voltage, I test for um, gain on all three of the different uh, ranges with the production test jig. I think I may have done a video somewhere on some of those uh, production test jigs. Anyway, if I did, I'll link them in at the end of this video. Hopefully if I can find, I've made too many videos, I forget. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. That is like a real world gotcha, a trap for young players and old alike um, on what's supposed to be an equivalent part across all manufacturers. I guess it's fortunate for us. I guess, you know, like this problem is fortunate in that it allows us to see a, re a rare, quite a rare real world problem like this. By the way, if you've got one of these um, uh, new ones and it is an issue, I've only had a couple of people report it. Obviously, it's only going to be a problem on certain capacitive uh, loads and things like that. Um, there may even be variations in the chip itself, the production chips, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it looks like only several people have uh, reported that. But if you do have a problem uh, with your microcurrent, um, it should, all previous ones should be fine. I think it's just this batch uh, production run that may have had some of these uh, on semi slash Fairchild parts fitted to it unknowingly. Anyway, um, yeah, if you do have one, uh, contact me and we can arrange something. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. Catch you next time.